come here today as a federal representative uh, to encourage my colleagues in the United States Congress to follow the lead of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania in declaring a national first responders appreciation day. Hopefully the day would be September 27th. That's the day the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania chose. But really what we want to do is let first responders, uh, not just here in this community but across the country, know that we understand they have a very difficult job. 97% of the time it's without uh, a lot of fanfare incident, but that 3% is really difficult for them. They, uh, they serve us under difficult and dangerous situations and circumstances, and they deserve a day recognized by the federal government as a day set aside to say thank you to first responders. Sadly, recent events have once again focused our Commonwealth and our nation on the danger faced by our first responders every time that they put on a uniform. Suspected cop killer Eric, Eric Frayne remains on the loose a week after shooting two Pennsylvania State Troopers, killing one. And for these reasons and for their service, our first responders should never go unthanked and their work should never be unappreciated. With that in mind, there has been a nationwide push for a First Responders Appreciation Day to recognize the importance of our emergency service personnel and to ensure that we are saying thank you. You see in New York and Philadelphia and all the different transportation systems, whether at the airport, the new threats against terrorism that they used to be faced by our military, but are now faced by first responders throughout this country. Certainly 9-11, these are things we never expected here in the United States, that our training has to change every day. And just keep in mind that our scope of what we have to do now is not simply just respond to an EMS call of a cardiac arrest, not respond just to a simple building, not that it's a simple, but a building fire, or locking up a bad guy, or responding to a house for a domestic. It's much broader than that. It becomes the, the homeland security of this country to make sure that the the roadways and the railways and everybody is safe and that people get to go to malls and the malls won't explode and people get to go to the movies and shop at Christmas time. These are the things that the men and women are faced with.